What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and today's video is going to be a little bit different because today I want to walk you through the thought process and what goes through my mind when I am learning about a new industry and new companies. And so in this video, I'm going to walk you through that entire process of what my investment thesis is all the way to the final decision about how I feel about a company in a new industry that I am just starting to learn about. And so if you get any value out of this video, remember to click that like and subscribe button let's jump right in. Okay, so starting with my investment thesis, this is what goes through my mind when I am looking at new industries and new companies and I've got a little bit of money in my pocket. This is how I invest my money. Number one is I try to find industries that are growing quickly and I try to buy the best companies within that industry. It's very, very simply. If the industry is going in the wrong direction, if it is contracting, if it is not going to be bigger in 10 years, then I don't want to deal with any of the companies in that industry. But if we can find an industry that's got good morals, it's operating in, an, in a great area, it's got good growth ahead of it, and I think it's going to be important in the future, that's what I am looking for. And then I want to focus on that industry and I want to try and find the companies with the most potential within that industry or just the best companies within that industry. So that's where my head starts and that's where I like to position myself as an investor. Now, for me, the industry that we are gonna be talking about today is quantum computing. So the reason that I am super interested in quantum computing is because the applications for it are absolutely massive. We're talking about solving diseases, solving economic issues, better trading, better investing. We're talking about better planning and better, better solutions, new solutions to problems that we had no way of solving before. And so I think quantum computing is gonna be pretty, pretty big in the future. There's a couple of big things happening in the space but what I want to do first is just talk about what is quantum computing and how is it different than regular computing and I think IBM actually did a good job here of kind of summarizing it and so quantum computing harnesses the phenomena of quantum mechanics to deliver a huge leap forward in computation to solve certain problems. And so this is basically what I was explaining is that a quantum computer is very different than a regular computer because it solves a different set of problems that we just weren't able to do before. And so there's a couple of different companies in the space that we are gonna focus on in this series as I get in more and more into this industry. Today, we're gonna focus on this company here called Quantum SI. And I'm gonna walk you through, now that we've identified the industry, let's go start evaluating some of these companies. I'm gonna walk you through my entire evaluation of Quantum SI and then in the the next few videos in this series, we're actually going to take a look at these two companies here. And if you have any additional quantum computing companies that I should look at, please leave them in the comments down below so that I can add them in. And I want to make a full video about them because I really want to just dive into this industry so that I can understand it and make the right investment. I do currently have an investment in Google. Google is pretty big in the quantum computing space. They're really kind of pushing the boundary forward. I already have Google in my long-term portfolio. I don't know if I'm ever going to sell it. I like Google. It's a great company. But what I want to do here is try and dive into some of these smaller companies that are just getting up and running that are starting to really push through with some new techniques. And the reason that we're going to start with Quantum SI is because if you look at their stock chart today, they're actually up 22.27%, which is a huge, huge move up. And not only that, but they also have the highest volume that we have seen in basically the last sort of five or six months. And so very, very impressive movement from the last few days of Quantum SI. We have broken through our moving averages here. It looks like we're kind of testing our resistance level here. We have a crossover of the MACD, an exit of the oversold zone on the RSI. And as of right now, everything looks like it's moving in the right direction for Quantum SI. Now, the business model at Quantum SI is a little bit complicated. Here is how the company describes it, and then I'm gonna simplify it for you. But the company's suite of technologies are powered by a first of its kind semiconductor chip, which is the quantum computing chip, designed to enable single molecule next generation protein sequencing and digitize proteomic research in order to advance drug discovery and diagnostics beyond what has been possible with DNA sequencing. And so basically in simple terms, what I've done here is I've kind of simplified it and they are a benchtop system for sequencing proteins. So not the DNA in your molecules, but they're actually focused on the proteins within your body and they're focused on sequencing those proteins. And that is beneficial for drug development as well as diagnostics. And they're trying to make this benchtop system available for about 50,000 USD. And so in summary, 
Their technology can tell how your body responds to infections and vaccines and probably a variety of other use cases, but it seems like these are kind of the, the two big value propositions here. And so in my understanding, which is extremely basic, I'm just learning about this, but basically they have a technology that's similar to DNA sequencing, except they've taken that sort of principle and applied it to protein sequencing because your DNA isn't gonna tell you whether or not you have COVID or whether or not the vaccine is working, but if you can apply that same sequencing technology to proteins, it will tell you if that vaccine works or what's happening with that infection or how your body is reacting to different things. And so sort of a similar idea with a different application. And I think it's a really, really cool and a really, really useful business model. Now, this company itself went through a SPAC deal that stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Corporation. And it's basically where a big investor goes out and raises a bunch of money and then takes that money and invests it into a private company and merges those two companies to then become public. And so that's what a SPAC deal is or a Special Purpose Acquisition Corporation. That's exactly what happened in our scenario here. So High Cape Capital merged with Quantum SI at a $1.46 billion valuation and that listed the shares at $10 per share. So this deal went through and High Cape Capital put a $1.46 billion valuation post money on this company, which means the share started to trade at $10. And currently, as I just took that screenshot that I showed you, the shares are currently trading at $7.73. So it's trading at about a 22.5% discount to where the SPAC merger and to where the SPAC deal went through. And that could mean that we're getting in at a discount. Now, when it comes to the roadmap for the company, here's what they say are their four key focuses. Number one is expansion of product development and commercial organization. Number two is to scale the product readiness and supply chain. Number three is the expansion of the early access program. And I will also say that on their presentation, they noted that they currently have five early access systems that are active at external sites. So they do have a couple of units that are out there and kind of going through the trials right now. And then number four for them is to accelerate the single molecule applications and future products. So they are planning to kind of expand the product line and the applications for this technology. However, here is where things started to go a little off the rails for me and where I was a little bit disappointed in this company. Number one, I like the technology, I like the business model. I'm not super educated on the business model and their specific application of the business model but the numbers here, this is where it kind of fell apart for me. So as of right now, the company has no revenue. By 2025, they're forecasting $186 million worth of revenue, which means that like in four years from now, the company's gonna be doing 186 million in revenue, but they're worth over $1 billion today. That means that currently they're at a 5.7 price to 2025 sales ratio, which in my books is a little bit high. If this was current sales and they were 5.7X, that'd be a steal of a deal. If this was next year's sales and it was 5.7X, that'd be a pretty good deal. But if this is four years away and it's still a 5.7X price to sales ratio, that's a little bit high for my blood. That's something that I wasn't a huge fan of. And personally, that seems like a little bit of a high valuation for a SPAC deal. Now, here are what the financials look like. So this is the balance sheet here, and it is extremely clean. It's dated for September 30th, but over $500 million in current assets and under $16 million in total liabilities. So the, the balance sheet looks absolutely beautiful. And here's what the income statement looks like. Obviously, no revenue yet because they haven't sold any of these units, and they're currently burning through roughly $20 million per quarter. So this company has lots of runway. They've got cash in the bank. They're not hurting for money at all, and they should have enough room to finish the development here. So I do think they're gonna to get to the point where they're selling these units. It's just a question of how many units are they selling? How much revenue are they bringing in? And is this company worth a billion dollars today? I don't know. So here's my plan. My thoughts after looking at this company and starting to get into this industry is I'm definitely not going to be buying this company for the long term right away. I might wait and see what the traction looks like. I am interested in this stock for a short term swing trade based on the technical analysis as long as it's below $10. So trading it from that $7.75, maybe $8 back up to $10. I really, really like that trade. There's 25% profit in there. I think it's a great, phenomenal opportunity. However, this company is too expensive for a company with no revenue and limited customer traction. It sounds like the technology is going in the right direction. It sounds like it's progressing very well, but they only have 
have five active units out, out there right now. So I would not say that that is substantial customer traffic. I would like to see some more units out there and some positive feedback from the customers. Now, the last two points here is number one, management does seem to have a history in the industry. I watched several interviews of the CEO as well as some of his other work. He seems like a smart guy. He seems like he knows what he's doing and he's kind of gone through this before. Seems like this probably isn't his first sort of cycle in developing a technology and then selling it to these customers. However, my only thing that just creeps in the back of my head is these vibes about Theranos. Theranos was basically a company that had another kind of magic medical box that was gonna do amazing things and it completely busted. And so this company, I'm not comparing them to Theranos, I'm not saying they're like Theranos, but I'm just saying like, this company needs to prove that this unit actually works really well, that customers really, really want it, and that they have good traction. That's what I'm gonna be looking for over the next few weeks because as of right now, I just don't see enough good, solid traction. It feels like we've got great technology that's in development stage right now, but I'm looking for more customers. That's gonna be the number one key indicator for me, but I do like it for a short-term swing trade, so I am definitely interested in the stock. Now, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about how to analyze companies like this, look at the stock chart and read the financials, then definitely consider checking out my Stock Market Fundamentals course. It is completely free and it's hosted on Skillshare where you can sign up with the link down below and you get two weeks of free access to the entire platform where you can take my 10 hour course. There's over 340 reviews from people that have just like you that have gone through the course. There's over 10,000 students that have gone through the course. There's over 1.5 million minutes of watch time. I promise you it'll be the best free resource that you can find online and the link is down in the description to this video. Now, if you got any value out of this video, remember to click that like and subscribe button. I sincerely appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one. Good luck trading, good luck investing, and we'll talk to you soon.